Welcome back to Knowledge is Kings, guys. I am Kings, and today we will be continuing our Building Basics series. Today's topic is how to lay out and cut common rafters. Let's get to it. I've made a small model here, and I'll go over the parts of the roof. These are the common rafters. This is the ridge board. This is a hip rafter, which we won't be covering in this video, as well as the hip jack rafters. Looking at the rafter itself, we have the peak, the tail, the overhang, and the seat cut. Here we have our building that needs a roof. The distance across the whole thing is called the span, and in my little model, the span is 3 feet, or 36 inches. To calculate the roof, we want half of that distance, which is called the run. The run is 1.5 feet, or 18 inches. Now we need to calculate how long the rafter will be. For this building, we will be using the slope 412. This means that for every 12 inches we move on the run, the roof goes up, or rises, 4 inches. The slope is the rise over the run. To figure out what the length of C is, we use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our a is 12 squared, and our b is 4 squared. So that's 144 plus 16 equals c squared. Simplified, it becomes 160 equals c squared. Taking the square root of each side, we get that c is 12.6491. This is the length of the rafter for every foot we have of run. So we take the run in feet, which is 1.5, and multiply that by the 12.6491 we just calculated. This gives us 18.97 or about 19 inches. This is the length of the rafter from the peak to the edge of the wall. Now we need to add on to that the overhang we want for the rafters. For this example, I want the overhang to be 6 inches. To figure out how many feet that is, so we can multiply that by our 412 constant, we divide how many inches we have by 12. And that comes out to be 1 half or 0.5. We take this number and multiply this by our 412 constant, which comes out to be 6.3245 inches. As our tape measure doesn't have 0.3245 on it, we need to get it into a fraction of sixteenths of an inch. To do that, we take the decimal 0.3245 and multiply it by 16, and the answer we get is how many sixteenths it is. So it is 5.19 sixteenths, or when we round, 5 sixteenths. We add back our 6 inches and we get the added length of 6 and 5 sixteenths inch. This is the length we need to add to our rafter to account for the overhang. The total length then of our rafter with overhang is 25 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. The next thing we need to figure out is the seat cut so we can figure out the height of the ridge board. There is no actual calculation for this, it's just how much bearing you want on the wall, for which I did 3 inches, which gives us 2.5 inches left vertically. We need to first calculate the total rise of the roof. The entire portion of the roof we are working on is proportional to the rise and the run. So we can say that the 4 inch rise over 12 inch run of the slope is equal to the unknown total height of the roof over the 18 inches total run of the roof. Then we can multiply across to get 72 is equal to 12x, where x is the unknown total height of the roof. Then we can divide both sides by 12 to get the total height of 6 inches. Now this isn't the height of the ridge, this is the height of the peak of the roof, assuming the rafters look like this. Another way we could do this is multiply the 4 inch rise by how many 12 inch runs we have, which is 1.5, and that would also give us 6 inches. Now our rafters look like this, and this point here is the same as this point here, 
And as we saw in the rafter I had already made, this vertical distance is two and a half inches, which we need to add to the six inches we just calculated. This is the total height of the peak of the roof from the top of the walls. This is not the top of the ridge board, as this assumes the ridge board looks like this. We need to figure out the height of the little triangle there. Well, we know that half of the triangle is 0.75 inches, as the span of the triangle is made from a two by four, which is one and a half inches wide. So we can use the same proportion that we used before. Four over 12 is equal to X over 0.75. And by multiplying across, we get three is equal to 12 X. And dividing both sides by 12, we get that the height is equal to a quarter inch. We subtract this height from the eight and a half inches we calculated earlier. This is now the total height of our ridge board. Now, if we want to support the ridge board, we need to know how tall to make the block that will hold it up. The ridge board here is three and a half inches. So we need to subtract that from the eight and a quarter inch to give us a block height of four and three quarter inches. And this is what it should look like. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to calculate the angles inside the 412 slope triangle. I don't know a simple way to figure this out other than trigonometry because it's been 20 years since high school and I can't remember that far back. So if you don't understand these mathematic principles, you will just have to take my word for it that these answers are right. But to find the angle of X, which is the angle a plumb cut needs to be, we know that the tangent of that angle is equal to four over 12. And to get X by itself, we need to take the inverse tangent or arc tangent of four over 12, which is equal to 18.435 degrees. So to find the last angle, we can take that number from 90 degrees, which gives us 71.565 degrees, which is the angle a board would need to be cut at to get a level cut. You could also take the arc tangent of 12 over four to get that angle. One thing I almost forgot to mention is that the rafter length we calculated is correct if we were placing two rafters together to look like this. But we are going to be having a ridge board in there. So we need to subtract half the thickness of the ridge board from each rafter. So half the thickness of the two by four is three quarters of an inch. And this needs to be measured on the rafter from a point perpendicular to the plumb cut at the peak. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Before we mark our first rafter, I wanna show you the information we need from the framing square. I have two because the Johnson square on the top is easier to read, but because of the sticker they placed on it, it ripped the print off when I tried to remove it. So the next framing square is really hard to read on camera, but it is embossed, so the numbers are always there. But if we look at the top framing square, it shows the line we need to read, which is common rafter length per foot of run. Then if we go over to the 412, it is uh, unreadable. But if we look at the empire framing square right under it, we see it says 12.65. That number seems familiar. Yes, that is the 412 constant we calculated earlier. So you don't need to calculate it again if you have a framing square. On the left speed square, it has a mark for common rafters, as does the large speed square, and I'll show you how to use those here in just a bit. To lay out a 412 slope with a framing square, you need to hold the tongue at the rise, which is four, and the blade at the run, which is 12. Now we have the two angles we need for the roof. This line is the plumb cut, and this line is the level cut. For a roof, a plumb cut means if the board is placed at the angle of the roof, the cut is plumb or perpendicular to the ground. But if the board itself is placed plumb, the cut is parallel with the roof. A board placed plumb on the roof would be used for a support for a ridge board running perpendicular to another ridge board. A level cut is similar, but turn 90 degrees. A level cut means if the board is placed at the angle of the roof, the cut is level or parallel with the ground. But if the board is placed level, the cut is parallel with the roof. A board placed level on the roof would be a ridge board that is running perpendicular to another ridge board. If we want to use the speed square to set the plumb angle, we just need to pivot the square until the four on the common section of the speed square lines up with the edge of the board that our pivot point is on. To mark a level cut, set the speed square squarely against the board and mark the four in the common section. And then without moving the speed square's pivot point, Pivot the square until the square edge lines up with the mark you made and draw a line. That is a level cut. It's a little harder on the speed square than the framing square, but it can be done. 
I want to draw your attention to the outer edge of the speed square. These marks are degrees, and if I hold the square on my level line, the degree reads 71 point something degrees. That seems familiar as well. Let's do the same thing on the plum cut. With the plum line, we get 18 point something degrees. So now you know where you can find the degrees if you need them without calculating. Now you can't get the exact degree we found mathematically, but you can get close enough for now. To start laying out my rafter, I'm using my framing square with stair gauges on it so I can always hold the angle correctly. Notice that the gauge is not at 12, but rather where it needs to be so that the 12 lines up with the edge of my board. The first plumb cut I make is the tail end of the rafter. Remember that the blade is now the horizontal section of the roof and what we call the run. So to mark where my six inch overhang ends, I can just mark the six on the blade of the framing square. So I mark the six, then move my square over until my tongue of the square lines up with that mark and then draw that line. This plumb cut marks the outside of my wall. Then keeping the tongue parallel to the plumb cut, I move the outside corner to the top of the board, which is the top edge of my rafter, and I measure down two and a half inches, which is how much we determined earlier we would be lifting the rafters up for the seat cut. I didn't notice until editing that I actually marked two and a quarter inches, but I end up flipping it over and I mark it correctly the second time around. Then I put my square back on the stair gauges and slide the square over until the bottom edge of the blade lines up with that mark and finish the seat cut. Keeping the square on the plumb cut, I can now place a speed square on the blade where I need the final plumb cut of the rafter to be, which in this case is 17 and a quarter inches. This is our total run of 18 inches, less the half thickness of the ridge board, which is three quarters. Now I drew 18 inches on there just to check our total length from our calculations. Let's see how we did. Looks like our rafter length was 19 inches and 25 and 5 16 inches when we add the overhang. Perfect. Okay, to mark this with a speed square, you have to know the rafter length. You can't step it off like we did with the framing square. So I marked the top of the rafter right at the end of the board so I can hook my tape measure for easy measuring. Then I pull my tape measure and mark 19, and then 25 and 5 16 Then I just mark each of those marks with a plumb cut, making sure to make all the marks parallel to each other, and making sure to mark the two and a half inches down for my seat cut. Then I just use a square to make a line perpendicular to the plumb cut on that line. Remember that our plumb lines and level lines are perpendicular to each other. Since I couldn't step it off like I did with the framing square, I almost forgot to account for the three quarter inch we need to take off at the top. As I said before, I need to hold my tape measure perpendicular to the plumb mark and measure over three quarters of an inch and make a new plumb mark. Then I use a circular saw and a jigsaw to cut it all out. I have seen guys who just cut past their lines on the seat cut to forego having to use a jigsaw, but do not do that. It significantly weakens the tails of the rafters. Now to screw it to my model. As you can see, I already have a ridge board mounted up there. Let's see how we did on the angle. It should be 18.44 degrees. Look at that, 18.45 degrees, not too shabby. Now, if you were building a roof, you would make one rafter, make sure it works, and then use that as your template to trace it on all the other boards, and then cut them all at once. Before I wrap this up, I wanna clarify a little further what I meant by stepping off using the framing square. Let's say that you have a run that is 36 inches. The framing square isn't that long, but we can step it off. I'll mark the tail, then the start of the overhang. Coming from that mark, which is the outside of our wall and thus the start of the run, I mark over on the blade 12 inches. This is 12 inches over on the run of our building. Then I move the square over to that mark and mark 12 inches again. This is now 24 inches over on the run of the building. Then I do that one more time. I move the square to that mark and mark 12 inches again, and this is now the total 36 inches of the run we were looking for. By stepping off like this, you can mark any length run you would need. Just remember to almost always use the top side of the framing square. You can use the bottom side, but if you jump back and forth on the same board, errors are likely to happen. There are a couple different ways to lay out a common rafter, but I will not be covering those methods in this video. 
My next Building Basics video will be covering hand framing hip roofs with their hip jack rafters. These will have their own set of calculations that are a little trickier. And I'll show those to you as well as how to figure it out with the framing square and speed square as I did in this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a like as it really helps out the channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Also, if you have any questions or need something clarified, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, there's one more thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention earlier is the difference between pitch and slope. They're often used interchangeably when people are talking about roofs, but they're actually not. So here we have two buildings. This one's 24 feet span. This one's 24 feet span. So this one's gonna have a slope of 412. And slope is the rise over run. And the pitch is actually a percentage derived from the total height divided by the total span. So this is four over 24 or one, six, which equals about 16%. Now this one, we're still at a 412 slope. I still have the same degree that it's going up, but now since it's a mono slope, it goes all the way over. So the height is eight feet. So we take that total eight feet height divided by 24. Okay, so that gives us one third which is equal to 33%. So even though these two buildings both have the same slope, the pitch on the second one is doubled because pitch is a percentage derived from the total height divided by the total span. And the slope is how much we move up for every foot, the rise over run. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. A lot of people use those interchangeably, but as you can see, they're not actually the same thing, but most people that I've worked with will refer to the pitch of the roof. And when they say it's a 412, and they're actually talking about the slope. Okay, now I'm done. Oh, I like that.